Well, hello everybody. Uh, we have another episode for you this week. A little bit more subdued, a little bit more serious this week. Wait, we're gonna why, be talking. Why is this more serious? What? How were we not serious before? I just, I kind of felt. Like when I, have we I'd ever not this. been serious? I mean, <laughs> right? I mean, Daniel, like you're already trying to break it up right now. Like, I'm trying to take the show a more of a professional All right, go, way. Do it, yeah, like, be you've professional. Been talking. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. We want to put forth a good a good front for what we do and the kind of people we are and the kind of things that we're going to talk to you guys about today because uh, I think you guys are going to like it. I think you guys are going to find a new way to uh, waste, I mean, invest your money into <laughs> things that uh, we just love. But I'm here. I'm Tim Baker. I'm here with your co-hosts. Daniel frickin' Brown. And John Stewart. Thank you, John, for keeping it again nice oh, and curt. Crap. I'm sorry. I'm working on it. I forgot. I forgot we're more serious. All right. Okay. I, thank I got you. it this time. <clears throat> Good to go. But we're going to be talking today later about a certain someone on... I don't... That was a strange way of describing it. <laughs> I've rescind that a professionally. someone. <laughs> Tim, we're that being like serious. Ha- that sounds like I need to have a talk from uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Human Resources Department <laughs> <laughs> using... Strange language. Anyway, we're going to be talking about someone who got a letter, an interesting letter from a bank. I don't think I've ever really gotten a, like a scary letter from the bank. I got one from the PA license department about a point thing, but never from like a bank, anything that really like mattered (laughs) that much. That reminds me, brief interjection, because we talked about car registration a few episodes ago, and I'm, I, got a letter that said my license or my registration might be suspended because they didn't have insurance records. And I like it said like within 15 days, but I never checked my mail. So <laughs> by the time I read the letter, I think I was suspended <laughs> and I have no idea like where that stands right now. Like I called my insurance company and they notified the state, but I haven't heard anything else since that. So I, for all I know, I'm suspended right now. Which, uh, crap, now if I go to court, this is going to get me in trouble, but whatever. All right, continue, Tim. So, yeah, we're going to get to that a little bit later, something some people might have some experience with um, a little bit. No, we're, we're going to get to the bank letter, not the car registration letter. Yes, correct. Nobody cares about your car registration letter, Daniel. Uh, everybody wants to know about the bank, but we're going to talk, <laughs> talk about that later. But first, what we have to mention to you guys today is something, and we don't have any kind of stay or stand in this in this company we just we i've actually been a fan of collectible card games for a long time (laughs) i i think they're overlooked for their uh their rules their their complex rules and their there's the strategy involved with them and i don't just see them as cheap pieces of paper sold for way too much money to get people to just collect things and they expand (laughs) like five hundred thousand times and then there's all these new things. It's collect this and collect this and there's potions too. <laughs> oh my God. No, I really, I, I think Well, it's that even better now because it's not just cheap slips of paper. It's literally artificial cryptocurrencies. Yeah, it's like, or, or even like, you know, Pokemon, like just digital, like you own this Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's important for people though, Daniel. <laughs> uh, remember we need to sell this. Shh. Sh- Oh, yeah. My bad. Yeah. No, I just, I enjoy them. And I think, as Daniel mentioned, that there's, there's this trading card game. I guess you battle or something. Actually, I should probably ask Daniel. (laughs) Well, I have actually played the game. Well, we should start like any good news show. We should lead with the news. All, all the news is, is that there's an in game currency for this card game, Spells of Genesis. The in-game currency is a cryptocurrency, and it's called Bit Crystals, and the price has like more than doubled over the past week or two. So that's that's the only news is the price is going up quite a bit, and it's pretty cool because the game is about to launch. I think within a month or two. I think officially it's in beta now, and it'll officially launch. So. So yeah, so that is happening. The price is going up, uh, and there are rare cards that are going up. And yeah, the gameplay itself, I I do have the app on my phone, and it's kind of a... You guys have played like Brick Breaker games before, right? Where you have a paddle and you bounce this ball and try to break the bricks, right? Yeah. It's kind of a spin on that. 
like your cards are at the bottom and you tap to aim at the enemies that are out in the field and you shoot this thing that bounces around and you hope it kills your enemies and your enemies bounce around too that's the actual gameplay and uh, but obviously yeah it's about collecting the cards and stuff and and I don't even care Tim you know if people know that we're invested you know because because we are we got some bit crystals and it's pretty freaking cool and we have some rare cards a Satoshi card sold. That's probably the rarest card in the game. There's only 200 of them in existence on the blockchain. And that, that's the other thing about this card game. We've mentioned it in a couple episodes, but that's the main value proposition of this card game is that the cards are on the blockchain, just like Bitcoin. Just They're, they're a counterparty asset. A, a counterparty is the system that runs on the blockchain and you know ltb coin was a counterparty asset and there were some other big ones but anyway so there it is what do you think tim are we gonna are we gonna buy a yacht with bit crystals one day i don't really care what i buy but i want it to be something that's at least expensive enough for it to be stupid to be bought <laughs> with the currency from an online trading card game. all right so we need ideas guys all you listeners what should we buy with our bit crystals when we get filthy rich off of them? Should it be a yacht? Should it be a Rolex? Should it? I don't know. Let us know. Leave a comment if you're listening on YouTube or wherever on the website. If you're listening, leave a comment. Tell us what we should buy. Send us a tweet to at you, me, and BTC. We are always up for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I like the yacht idea. Just what kind for, of stuff are we always up for? No, for communication from our audience, oh, for okay. tweets and comments. We always want you guys to talk to us, definitely. I'm actually, give us give us an idea for like how how we want to spend the money, as Daniel's been saying, because then it'll feel better if other people tell you it. Then it it makes it seem like it's real in your own head. <laughs> John, I think we've had plenty plenty of conversations on this show about when we're willing to spend money and what makes us willing to spend money. Do we buy brands? Do we Are we cheap bastards? And honestly, over the years of this show, I've fluctuated a lot. There have been times where I've been super cheap and I don't even want to spend money on, you know, like $2 or even like 99 cents on an app, which I have never done in my life. And there have been times where I've been a little looser and I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll shell out 50 bucks a year for Pandora because they accept Bitcoin. We've had all kinds of conversations about that, about when we spend money or for what. But I want to know, John, if there's anything that if you got filthy rich pretty quick, anything that you would splurge on, especially if it was Bitcoin related or crypto related, what would you spend your cryptocurrency on? just to show off the fact that you got rich on cryptocurrency, would you do anything? Yeah, I would probably pay off my student loans in like <laughs> a single payment. All right. Yeah, you could pay them off and just get like a bumper sticker that says, I paid off my student loans with Bitcoin. I guess it's more fun, though, if I pretend that I don't have them. And then what would <laughs> I buy? Maybe that's what you actually wanted to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. pretend like you're not a normal dude in the system with student loans and a job at a bank. Pretend like you're a true anarchist libertarian. <laughs> <And> <laughs> the weeds of the world have choked this yeah. year. <laughs> I mean, I would I would probably just buy a guitar. Or I would ah, or right. either that or I would buy like more recording stuff or like a really sick computer or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Nice, nice. Would you get uh would you get a Bitcoin colored electric guitar? I feel like those that color go, would go well on an electric guitar. The the bright Bitcoin orange. John, I would have to break that if you did that. Yeah. I uh probably wouldn't. I also probably wouldn't get an electric guitar, but uh <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. I uh, uh speaking of splurging, I I found another artist who I might be able to buy a giant piece of of art from so i i don't i don't think i ever mentioned this on the show but for a while i was trying to buy some original art from belgium it was, it was by somebody that's pretty well known on the bitcoin forums and stuff and i was i was willing to splurge a little bit on that but that fell through i still don't even know what happened he just kind of disappeared i i did reach out 
to a crypto artist on Twitter, and that's still a possibility, but he's been busy lately. So uh, anyway, but there's another possibility that I've been working on. So I might be, that's what I might be splurging on soon is some fancy art. And maybe I'll even see if I can make sure it has some crypto or digital themes in it. We'll see how that goes. So make someone make a movie. If you get like really rich, pay someone to make a movie with like subliminal messages towards <laughs> cryptocurrency set in like the, the yeah, during the dope. Civil War. That, that was dope, Tim. No, you have to make it like actual subliminal, not just like going out and telling these kids are selling drugs from online. <laughs> it's about Bitcoin. Watch our movie. It, you're just cracking be- again. You're not cracking, popping a bit. But so yeah, anyway, apologies, audience. I I do apologize for that. <laughs> but yeah, just make it do it as like this like real subliminal thing, so there'll be like three people who believe it, and everyone else will tell them they're stupid. Yep. And then you'll be like, this is actually about <laughs> money that comes to you too quickly from sources you do not understand. Yeah, we, how we, it destroys your life. We'll do it. We'll splurge on movies and art and audio equipment and stuff. But no, seriously, I mean, we, we are joking. We are invested in it and we are joking, uh, you know, about getting filthy rich off of it, which may could happen. But regardless of all that, uh, it is still a pretty cool, pretty innovative idea. It's the first card game on the blockchain i mean that's freaking awesome it's got a decent development studio behind it they've been they've developed a game before and it it still does fairly well in the app stores and stuff so you know there it is this is not a sponsored message it's just something cool that's been going on the price is going up and we are invested in it we do like it so we figured we would share it so so there you go any other thoughts that we got to get out about that Buy, buy, buy. Yeah, pump it, pump it, pump it <laughs> so we can dump it and screw you. <laughs> no. Oh, hey, this is uh, pretty totally random. Not We did not plan this at all, but it just came to my mind, probably because we were, you know, we were sounding like a bunch of junkies that might defecate in ear holes. Uh, this just came there to my mind go, because man. I heard Tim talking. But that was a comment that we that we received a week or two ago on one of our episodes. Wait, someone, say that again. Someone on Sounds YouTube like, Give it to me. said that it sounded like a bunch of junkies just defecated in his ear hole. So, <laughs> so there you go. That's us. We like to share our feedback, especially if was it's that good an episode feedback. that I wasn't in. <laughs> no, of course it was an episode you were in. What the hell? Yeah, actually, you're right, John. You were not in it. I did just pull it up. It, it it was, ironically, this was one of our best episodes in a really long time. It's probably in our top three or something. And uh, here it is, word for word. It was episode number 137 about Kim.com's grand vision for Bitcoin's future. And here's the quote. Wow, it felt like a bunch of intoxicated junkies just took a nice long dump into my ear holes. <laughs> so that it made me proud. Uh, that I replied there. It, I that comment made me proud. I love to know what I sound like and I'm proud to sound like an intoxicated junkie who takes nice long dumps in ear holes. So, there you go. Yeah, that was on World Crypto Network. <laughs> There's another person down here that says you should not be allowed on World Crypto Network. Fine, if that's what you think, believe it, but screw you. We don't need you anyway. So <laughs> Fine, believe it. I'm a ninja, but believe it. Yeah, well, this is... I I work at a media company, I've said this before, that has slightly clicky headlines. That's a That's an understatement. They, you know, there are people that literally do nothing but title posts to get clicks. It, you know, it's better than some clickbait, but it's still clickbait. All right. And uh, so I've been taking some leads from that. And I titled this episode, quote, this is Kim.com's grand vision for Bitcoin's future. And I'm learning that just including the word this in a title is, you know, it's like more than doubling some of our clicks, some of our numbers, because people want to know what this is. So, yeah, you can look out for more of that <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> oh, man. All right. 
All right. I, that's our that's our feedback hour right there, or feedback five minutes. We do like to read our comments from time to time because we seriously do like getting them. And there were plenty of serious ones on here, I guess, about like, oh, I, I like Kim.com and I wouldn't trust him for with my money. That was one of the things we were asking about in the episode. And yeah, we, we like to know what you think about that stuff. Someone said, I'm not, because we were talking about mesh networks and trying to describe them. And someone said, I'm not a fan of the term mesh network used to describe soft services when it has always been utilized in the topology realm. Somewhat certain IEEE would agree with me. And that's a good point. We were talking about a mesh network used for like storage, cloud storage, and cloud computing and stuff. Technically, a mesh network is a network topology. It literally means nothing other than like a web of connections. It's a bunch of computers connected to a bunch of computers. That's literally all it means. And that's a fair point. That's the true definition. So there you go. There's some more feedback for you. I guess I guess we should put in the real comments in addition to the intoxicated junkie comments. Are you tired of Bitcoin dice and ready for something different? Try Lucky Bit, the original falling coin game at luckyb.it. It's the most exciting Bitcoin game on the web. You can bet on five different payout lines and win up to 999 times your bet. You can even use their faucet to get some free Bitcoin. Dice is boring. Play different at LuckyBit. Check it out at LuckyBee.it. All right, what's next on the list, guys? Well, yeah, okay. Shut up, Daniel. Be quiet. (laughs) <laughs> it's time for John to talk now. Dun, da, da, da. About what? <laughs> okay. So. About a bank. About the bank that, was that we the were original, talking about before. That was the original question is what is next on the list? So I don't know why it was so hard to answer it, but all right, I, <laughs> I guess we're getting there. Okay. So this is a, a post that we found on Reddit about a guy who got physically banned from his bank, his personal bank, for using Bitcoin. I don't know. Should I? He so he included an image, which is a photograph of a letter that the bank. Yeah, sent we him. we can read this letter. It's not that long. Yeah, I'll just go for it as soon as it loads again because I <laughs> I closed it. And Wait, are to... you are you looking at the tiny pick one or the imger one? The tiny pick one. <laughs> See, that's the first comment that I have on my on the Reddit thread is an imger rehost because apparently everyone on Reddit hates. Tiny pick, and they pr- prefer Imgur or Imgur or whatever you Imgur. call it. So, well, it's funny because Imgur was started by people at Reddit who wanted a good way to share pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. um, now a lot of people hate Imgur because <laughs> it added a bunch of retarded features and it. Kind well, of well sucks no, it was, it was the other way around. In this case, they were hating Tiny Pick and they wanted the Imgur rehost. But maybe you're right. Maybe in general. They don't well, like Imgur. Imgur is the only thing that people have right now. But it's okay. like they made Imgur to have an image hosting site that just had no features. Just <laughs> yeah. And then it added all this social media uh, stuff. Ah, yep, yep. I know what you mean, yeah. All right. I'm, this is, stupid tiny pick won't even load. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Maybe that's why people hate it. <laughs> there we go. All right. Now that I finally got this open. Thank you, Reddit. Dear... Blank. Redacted, I guess I should say. Redacted (laughs) regrets to inform you that it is unable to serve your banking needs at this time. Your above-referenced account with Redacted will be closed in 30, 30 in parentheses, calendar days, (laughs) and an official check representing the balance in your account on this date, if any, will be mailed to you at the above address. You may close this account early if you wish. Any withdrawal against the account will be honored if sufficient funds are available in the account at the time the item is presented. If you would right. like... Well, hold on, hold on. We could, we could start there. There is some more fun stuff about, about the restrictions and stuff. But that's a good place to start. He claims that this was regarding Bitcoin, which now there's some definite questions about the validity, the validity of this because he doesn't even say what bank it was. He doesn't say where it happened. 
it's literally just like, oh, we shut down your account. So you never know. But uh, but yeah, what what do you think about that? And I possibly have some experience with this. I, I think I've mentioned it on the show, how I've had bank accounts shut down. And I theorize that it could be about Bitcoin, but I'm not really sure. But that's where I would start is what do you guys think about that? Is it is it realistic to expect a bank account to be shut down just because of Bitcoin? Well, I thought yours had more to do with the volume oh, of transactions. Yeah, high volume. Because I was, well, yeah, you're right. It might be because I was buying and selling Bitcoin and stuff. Yeah, and I so mean, they, they might get, not have even. I mean, yeah. one of my bank accounts is linked to my PayPal. And so the way that works is that when I use my PayPal, it transfers money from my bank account. And sometimes right. I've gotten warnings from my bank account because I bought five things with PayPal in a month. <laughs> and you're not Wait, allowed... is it a, Yeah, is it a savings account? No, it's a checking account. But, what? So it's just like if you go over a certain number of transfers, it's not purchases. What? It's just transfers. They wanted... So like ACH transfers. Whatever PayPal uses. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that'd, that'd be ACH. But um, wow, that that's crazy. Well, see, the a thing is, they wouldn't a checking account. See, the when they send me the warnings, though, it's not like we're going to close your account and not serve you anymore. It's we're going to change your account type to something that allows more transfers. Yeah, okay, okay. But it, that's never actually happened. I've only gotten warnings. So, okay. I don't know, but as far as the this particular case, it I don't know. I'm not completely convinced. I think it's plausible that this actually is about Bitcoin and that it's legitimate because that is also like under scrutiny. But um, it's I think it's plausible, but I'm not totally convinced that that's what's yeah. happening. Right. I mean, his claim I read in the comments is that like I've only had the account for two months and all I used it for was Bitcoin wire transfers. So, I mean, if we believe him. You know, it could be that. But here's the thing. Just like I, I meant to say this about my account, they might have no idea that the transfers are related to Bitcoin in my case or in this case. They might just see the high volume of transfers and that might be enough. So it, it might not be about Bitcoin. I, is that what you were getting at, John? Mm hmm. Yeah, I, th I think that's where we could leave this. I mean, we don't really have any reason to distrust the original poster. I mean, there's not. Uh, what what is he trying to gain? Like Reddit karma or something? Yeah. <laughs> like I'll write up this whole fake letter and print it out and redact it. I gotta get that Reddit karma. Woohoo! Well, the other thing, which is, um, actually though, on the internet, there certainly are like. people that are that low. So you never know. <laughs> yeah. So I think the the funny thing is the last paragraph. I guess I'll just read the whole thing. Yeah, yep, that's that's the next thing we got to talk about. The, the middle paragraph doesn't really matter. It's just like if you want to discuss this, feel free to contact this number that which is redacted. Contact redacted. <laughs> Who's redacted? I looked redacted up in the phone book and I I can't find it. <laughs> Anyways, effective immediately, you are not permitted in or on any property owned or leased by Redacted. This includes all Redacted parking lots and remote Redacted ATM locations. If you would need to enter one of the locations for any, business's purpose, any business purposes over the next 30 calendar days, you must make prior arrangements through the physical security department. <laughs> Please use the branch contact information provided above to initiate contact with the physical security department. <laughs> Very truly yours, redacted. Very truly yours. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's what made me laugh, is the physical security department. Which, I, it isn't even that weird. I mean, it's just a, a bank department. It makes perfect sense. But I, I don't know why I had to laugh when I read that. Go make arrangements with the physical security department. So that when you come visit us, we can have two armed security guards on either side of you and make sure that you don't do any. See, that, that's the thing is, even if it was a high volume of transactions, even if it was Bitcoin related, what is it that makes them feel like their security is at risk? Yeah, physical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean... Maybe, I mean, like maybe even, if they think this guy's like in a drug cartel and he's gonna come shoot up everybody at the bank. 
<laughs> yeah. Just, just get the money back. He's like, shit, I got to get out of here now. And they're not going to let me just ex- just take everything out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Even or, though they are going to just let him take everything out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or, he wants to do it faster. He doesn't want to wait in line. Or have to wait for the stupid hours. Wait, when this is a completely open. sidetracking, but have you guys heard about the blind guy that robbed banks? <laughs> no. No. I can't remember exactly what happened, but it was basically like, it was like a blind guy who came in and basically just told them to give him money every day. And it wasn't a lot of money and he would just do it like every day. And, and so they never prosecuted him. Wait, why? Actually, I think he pretend, I think he pretended to be blind. It was, it's something about, I'm going to look it up and then I'll, (laughs) I'll tell you because I, the details are, what is the word? I can't remember the word either. <laughs> the details have slipped my mind. That's not what I was looking for, but the actual word also slipped my mind. So I guess it's just that he was blind and he heard, overheard somewhere that bank tellers at federally insured banks were instructed to hand out money to robbers without incident. So like he just <laughs> did it a bunch of times and he didn't get caught until he did it one time while um there was like an armed guard delivering a bunch of money to the bank. <laughs> like that's yeah. just couldn't see him. Yeah, that was the only time that he got caught. Well, and and they're not supposed to like follow up afterwards and like check the cameras. Like, was he just asking for? Well, this bucks? was this was in the seventies. Uh, okay, okay. And he All and right. he would just he would just come in and like show them a note, and they would give him money, <laughs> and he would just walk out. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't and he never, really have much recourse. He would say that he had a gun, but he never actually had a gun. <laughs> like, he would just walk in with a cane and a note. <laughs> oh, that's good. All right. New new thing to try out one of these days. A good, well, not uh, anymore, no. A fun date or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's called fun. Blind Bob. <laughs> Blind Bob. Blind Daniel, that weird guy. <laughs> Wait, what? Are you saying that's Nothing. what they'll call me? Yeah, if you start acting like you're blind around people, they probably will. Well, you said this guy actually was blind, right, John? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. So or I if first you just make to, yourself blind. I have to gouge my eyes out so well, that people yeah. have more pity on me. <laughs> he was legally blind, but he could see, like, outlines of stuff. Okay. okay. Yeah, like, my uncle is legally blind, but he can, like, kind of walk around. Well, he had to use a cane, but apparently he could see, like, my shadows. My uncle should probably use a cane. <laughs> but, yeah... That's weird, though. That, yeah, that they wouldn't fall up, but yeah, they wouldn't be able to do that anymore. The seventies kind of killed it. You said to do everything online now, or just scam old people out of stuff on TV with fake jewelry. <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's see. Any other good comments in here about Imgur or, <laughs> or about the validity here? I mean, well, one no, other but- thing is that the guy said that right after he got this letter, he used an ATM from the bank. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he was like, ha, to I used their out. ATM today to pull money out. Fuck them. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, someone else says, I bet the tra- the wire transfers were at or just below $10,000. And that's a BSA Johnny don't do. I don't know what that means, but yeah, don't. That's definitely a no go. Which that, that was something I was about to bring up a little bit ago, too. It's just that. Maybe the transfers were from sketchy accounts or, yeah, sketchy amounts could definitely be a thing. And and when I say sketchy, I mean by the government's terms. I I don't care at all. I I don't care how much money you move or where you move it. But, you know, there are, you know, the government came up with this $10,000 number. And magically, once you have that much money, you're automatically a threat. So, so yeah, all that stuff is, is a possibility. And <laughs> they don't want the police following in him, him in because he obviously travels around with huge bags of cocaine stuffed under all of his coats. So they don't want the police to have to make a raid on the bank itself. That's why they're afraid of it. I don't think it's the bank scared of him. I think the bank is scared more of somebody coming after him and then them being well, yeah, associated that's, that's with him. The thing. Yeah, the, the bank doesn't care about moving the money like they they'll take your money. They don't want to close accounts. The only reason they do it is for compliance. They're scared of the government. 
And uh, so they have no choice. And so they have to have giant compliance departments just to deal with this crap. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, and, yeah, maybe it's maybe they are worried about the physical activities of law enforcement in their banks, too. And they want to avoid that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So person uh, this <laughs> i just i just picked one out at random that looks kind of interesting and the the username here is hillary is a reptile <laughs> <laughs> but it says personal bank in a big four bank here yeah we are instructed to file a report for anything that looks or feels suspicious after opening the account or performing a wire transfer the back office then makes a decision as to what to do with the account. Wires in particular are highly scrutinized. I feel weird having to question the customer what the wire is for because it's not my business, but I have to is basically what he's saying. So there you go. That's that's about it, I'm sure. I mean, that's the extent of it is just suspicious activity. I mean, I mean would you guys disagree? Is there anything else that really could be a factor here? Oh, uh, most likely not. <laughs> he's, I mean, because even according to him, he's only used it for doing stuff with Bitcoin. So unless they've literally found, like, like he deposited, like, a bag of some kind of incriminating stuff, like, with his money or something like that, there's no other reason Wait, wait, what, to, what do you mean? Wait, he's doing do you... wire transfers. He. It sounds like he's never actually physically deposited anything. Tim, how do you deposit uh, a bag of something into your bank I account? I mean, like, if he somehow... No, like, he went to the bank at one point, like, physically, and, and something about and he, him freaked him. But that doesn't make any sense as far as that goes. You mean he deposited something <sighs> with oh my God. a bag of... No, no, I just meant, like, if he... Like, if something happened while he was at the bank... All right. Well, he was physically at the bank, which scared people, and then John said that... He's doing wire transfers. I don't know how you I got... I didn't say that it made sense. I was just saying that's the only other thing I can think of besides that it's just about Bitcoin. I, I agree with that he could have done something physically suspicious at a bank. I'm not sure how you got from there to depositing a bag of something. Oh, uh, all right. Did you mean like a bag of money? <laughs> Is that Is what that you? No, no, that's not what I meant. Just stop. What was that noise you just made? I don't know. I didn't realize I made a noise. All right, just go. Anyway, all right, well, I mean, I don't know if there's much else to say. Does that mean we're on to Advice of the Week, guys? Yes. Collective from all of us, including John Stewart, again, he has a lot of hope, too, in BitCrystals that it, uh, <laughs> it'll keep on going up. And um, we'll see you on the moon, guys. Just remember that. So I'm here's an interesting piece of advice. This didn't really come up in the show, but it's it's what came to mind just now. I agree with Tim that one piece of advice is go buy some bitcoins and pump it up or buy some bit crystals and pump it up and look but but seriously actually look into spells of genesis it is a pretty cool idea so if if you want to do that too do it but the other piece of advice that just came to mind was isn't there like a classic proverb or no maybe not a proverb but isn't it just common advice that you should never lend money to friends. Uh, that that's a thing, yeah. right? <laughs> so so that that's my advice is never lend money to friends because <laughs> it always puts you at risk and can ruin friendships. And uh but here we are today and I have a bunch of Tim's bit crystals and a bunch of his spells of Genesis cards that are worth eh, a decent yeah. amount and I have them in my control. So I just, you know, don't lend money to your friends because that means that people like me will have the ability to screw over people like Tim. And that is a bad situation to be in. So I'm, yep, yeah, there you go, Tim. I'm, I'm keeping it. Yeah. I'm keeping all your money. Sorry about that. And uh, oh, I have and, some recordings from a certain night that could be leaked wait, out that involve wait, I, <laughs> some words that were spoken. I, uh, that, that will go out if I'm not given my money. <laughs> I can't say that I remember exactly what you're talking about, but I do absolutely believe you. <laughs> I'm sure you probably do. So, yeah, I, I, I guess I believe you, Tim, and maybe I should be scared. 
But there we go. I guess that's. I guess we have collateral. Like, but I'm so. not. Cause you're putting... uh, that's that. Maybe that's the advice. Is if you're going to loan to friends, make sure you have some collateral. That, that's if you're going to put a knife in somebody's it. hand, always make sure you have a knife in their back too, because <laughs> they're going to stab you in the back. Never, never trust anybody with your life, <laughs> ever, ever. Exclude yourself. That's what Bitcoin's about. So you can stay in your house and just pay for everything that way. All right, John, you've been quiet. Any thoughts on BitCrystal's lending money, or do you have some fresh new advice for us? Oh, I mean, never use tiny bit or whatever it is. Tiny bit. Oh, tiny pick. Tiny pick. Tiny pick. <laughs> never use tiny pick. <laughs> All right. Man, I, I don't know. Let us know. Seriously, guys that are listening, let us know what you like better, because I feel like today we bounced around a several different smaller topics we talked about bit crystals we read some feedback we talked about this bank stuff and the letter and then we got off onto bank robberies do you i want to know do you like several smaller topics better or would you rather what we often often do is we start out with maybe a news story or just a random idea that we had and we'll read a paragraph or we'll just say, oh, I was thinking about this lately. And then we're just we're just off into God knows where. And we just take that thread until we burn it dry. And and yeah, I want to know what you like better. Would you rather we bounce around from several interesting things, read some feedback, give some advice, talk about bank robberies? Or would you rather we picked an idea and just went with it and did a whole hour and a half about it. <laughs> Ugh, I don't know. I don't know. I want to know what you like better. Like we talked about earlier, leave a comment on YouTube or on our website. If you're really into email and you want to keep stuff private, you can email me, daniel at you, me, and btc.com. That's also a good thread if you want to advertise with us on the website or in the podcast. Uh, but yeah, so send us a tweet at you, me, and btc.com. Let us know what you like better, what you thought of today's show. If you thought we were intoxicated junkies defecating, you know, let us know. Let us know. You can find more episodes if you did enjoy this or if you want to know what we were talking about, you know, with our other formats where we just go off or if you want to know the other times that we've talked about bit crystals or anything at all, all of our past episodes, interviews, some opinion articles, whatever you want, can be found at you, me, and btc.com. So that's a good place to start if you want to. There's some links to our app there, links to Twitter, links to Facebook, YouTube, whatever. You, me, and btc.com. I'm going to throw another thank you to John for his music that you're probably hearing right now. John, What do you, are you still up for writing music for people? Is that something that, sh that people should contact you about? Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> All right, so how can they do that? You can. You could email me. Should, should they just start by using the regular Twitter, and then I'll put them in touch with you? Yeah, Twitter works too. Yeah, so if, if you want some music from John, uh, the price is pretty darn fair for completely original music. I pay him for music from time to time. So that is, yeah, send me a tweet also at you, me, and btc.com, and I'll put you in touch with John. And by now, I normally play his music for about a minute at the end of the show. So maybe when I said you were hearing his music earlier, maybe I hadn't even started it yet because now we've gone on for another minute or so. But now you're really listening to it, and we are really going to wrap up. Thanks for being here. You, me, and btc.com. Come back next Thursday. Peace. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>